is limited. How can you draw life from fellow man? He doesn't have. So he can't give. But we can draw life from the source of life itself. From the Lord Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. So as you're hearing God's word today, you are drawing life from the word. Because the word is life. You draw life so that you may have life in abundance. The life to the full to an overflow. That's what you draw it from. Hallelujah. But looking unto a man to draw life, you are given responsibility that is beyond a man. Look at it. I've got a password. Hallelujah. I, I, I have come to know that life is turn by turn. You can't have your testimonies and have my too. Yours is yours. And mine is mine. When God opens a door, he opens it specifically for his people. The door he has opened for you. Even if I'm not that person by, by accident enters it, he will not be recognized. Your door is your door. Are you hearing me? In case you see other people's door open and you run into it, you become a misfit. May you not enter and use the back to come out. There's only one guy that does that. He's known as the Mr. Crab. He goes in one way, he comes back the other way. He can't turn around. That's gear. In your life. You didn't hear me. Okay, let me face somebody who is in the spirit. You won't, you won't have the last year of your life. We are not like those who draw back to petition and are destroyed. We are like those who believe to the second of souls. And that's why we press on to the mark of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. We are pressing on until your victory is in your hands. And you hear me, you are pressing on until you have your victory in the name of Jesus Christ. And that victory is guaranteed today in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever has been assigned to kick you back, to frustrate you, to hinder you, to obstruct you, to make sure you take a detour on the path of life, those things they will fail this morning in Jesus' name. The word says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, Isaiah 40, verse 31, it said, Even the youth may be weak and grow faint. They may even lose strength completely. But they went further in 31, they said, But they that wait on the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. We, we came to wait on God this morning. I didn't come to show anybody my good uh, makeup. I came to appear before my maker. I came to wait on the Lord Jesus, my creator. Wait on him to hear what he has to say to me. Habakkuk chapter 2 says, And I will go upon my watch on the mountain to see what he will say to me. And so I can know what I will answer when he calls. Because the vision is for an appointed time. There is always time attached to our journey in life. There is time. That's why I can boldly say to somebody here that your turn is just about to happen. Yeah. Life itself happens in time. And that's why you cannot afford to be jealous of any other person's celebration. Just walk, enter their joy. And joy with the ones who are joyful. While you wait for your own visitation, just join those who are joyful. And enjoy the time while you wait. 
Hallelujah. Amen. We are waiting on God. I am waiting on God. And if you are waiting on God, some of these things don't come at our own calculation. It comes at his own time. Because Ecclesiastes says, he maketh all things, what? Beautiful in his own time. If it is God's time, it will be beautiful. Until it is his time, everything will look good. But when your time comes, the Bible says concerning Joseph, when his time came, the king sent for him. And he crowned them and made them the leaders of his people. I pray your time will come so speedily. And nothing will hinder your time in life. May you be alive and active and sensitive to your own timing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now we have an enemy we need to deal with today. And Jesus, I want to do what Jesus did. He said, get it behind the Satan. He is the one who always obstructs people from their destination. He sees the line, the finishing line. And it comes with every kind of arrow, every kind of attack. And he wants to drag people back into the past. That is his business. But I said, get it behind me, Satan. Why was he not in the front? At least if you come before me, I'm talking to you, okay? So, not a very good preacher, but I want to talk to you. If he comes from the front, at least I will see him. And I can engage him properly. But he comes from the back. So he uses things in the back and the past to turn your attention away from the front, the focus. He keeps you where? In the past. If the enemy can get you to stop your journey and look sideways like the exhortation and just take a peek at the back, he, succeed, he has succeeded in hindering you from feeling your race, accomplishing your race in the record time. I've seen the relay teams. I see people running. And I see situations where the one who was the first very much ahead of others. And they felt they won the race already. And they began to jubilate. They were actually making jest. And then looked back and said, guys, hey, before you know somebody dived before. Have you seen what I saw? Even in this Olympic, in the current Olympic. Hallelujah. He was busy celebrating. Oh, I got you. You are already at the back. I'm ahead of you. And the next thing is, I think two people came ahead. So the victor became, you won't lose. You are doing something very good and remarkable already. And angels are applauding you already. But right now you are entertaining the gallery. Either those booing you or those cheering for you. You give them your attention. In a way, you are distracted. Hallelujah. Uh, and the word says, looking on to Jesus. The one who generates, who started, who engineered, who orchestrated, who began your faith. Who also is the one to finish it. Just do one exercise for me. Get it. Don't look at anybody. But just imagine there is a devil in your mind, in your physical surrounding, in your business, in your job, in your health, in your career. Who stood by you to hinder you? And say, get thee behind me, Satan. Get out of my Stop you. Get thee behind me. Just like Jesus said. Say it with an anger in your spirit. Get it behind the Satan in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, get it behind the Satan. And because we do not see him physically, sometimes it comes with voices. It comes with suggestions. It comes with bassing in your ears. 
He comes with things that he curses you. He throws those javelin, those thoughts in your mind that keeps you grounded and keeps you disbelieving, unbelieving, and keeps you doubtful of what God is about to do with your life. Get it behind me, Satan. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Get it behind me. All right, because I said I want to talk to you, I want us to open a few scriptures and look into it carefully. And then I will lead you into some two prayers, just two prayers. And God will do deliverance for somebody. Open Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. We read 19 to 21. Now somebody help me. Okay, you put it on the, on the... All right, can we read together? One, two, three, go. Now the words of the flesh are manifest. Wait, 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 wait. Which are these? I want you to underline, if you can, on your, in your Bible, just look at the, work, the works of the flesh. If I went, I would cycle that word flesh. 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 It's important. We're going to look at it. The works of the flesh are this. Many, there are plenty. Let's look at it. Number one. Adultery. Married people getting involved in something else. Number two. Fornication. Those who are not married. Engaging in what married people do. Second one. Third one. Uncleanness. What? Uncleanness. uncleanness. What could be considered unclean? Okay, uncleanness. Next. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Can we read another translation that can help us? Break it down. Help us. Somebody, quick, quick, quick. Any translation? Are obvious. Sexual immorality. Sexual immorality immoral, impurity, immoral impurity. Promise. Go ahead. Go on. Go on. Idolatry. Idolatry. Sorcery. Sorcery. Hatred. Wait. Other 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 translation calls it witchcraft. So witchcraft is not as much of a spirit as it is a work of the flesh. So it's not everybody flying in the night alone that is a witch. Tap your neighbor. Do you hear that? Okay. Witchcraft. And what again? Hatred. Hatred. Oh, 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 oh. In the same category. A witch and another person that hates. They are relatives. Huh? They are in the same cycle. Go ahead. Next. Strive. Strive. I'm just continuing the work I started with the leaders on Wednesday. Strive. What does it mean to strive? Competitive jealousy. Struggling with each other. Next. Jealousy. Jealousy. Go ahead. Outburst of anger. Hey. In the same category, outburst of anger. How many of us have been angry within the one week? Within one week, honestly. Come on, come on. I know you. I'm going to call you. Even my Gloria was sincere. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Outburst of anger. Mama Joy, you, you, hallelujah, she, she, she managed this week. Adverse of anger, next. Selfish ambition. Selfish ambition. When you think about yourself alone, it's a work of the flesh. In the same category of witches. Go ahead. Decisions. Okay. Factions. Division. Isn't it? Division. Factions. Go ahead. Envy. Envy. Drunkenness. Drunk. Hey. 
You know that too. Parties uh, should know the more party. How many of you believe that Papa Shami knows the more party? She used to, at least. At least I know she used to. <laughs> Pastor Joe knows about party in the past. Party spirit. It groovy every weekend. Next. Carousing. Carousing. And anything similar, I tell you about these things in advance. Hallelujah. As I told you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I didn't say, but you see, he read it. It's your brother. And it's in the Bible. And if you look into your Bible, it's there. Anybody, mommy? It's in English. Okay, please help me. Everyone who they have sex with people who are not their own wife or husband. They're speaking about adultery. He said they think and they do dirty things. They do things that people ought to be very ashamed to do. They worship false gods. They ask bad spirits to help them. They become enemies and they fight. They hate other people because they themselves want to be like those people. They become very angry without any good reason. They want to be more important than other people. They refuse to agree, and so they belong to separate groups. They want things that are other people's. They are drunks. They have parties where they do all kinds of bad things. I have told you before how dangerous they used to do these things, and now I am telling you again. People who do things like this will not be God's people. Hallelujah. They do not belong to God's people that they do Nor will they receive the things that God has prepared for them. Are you seeing why we have to make a decision today? To say these things, they are instruments of Satan. Get it behind me. Those things, those everything we listed there, they are operations of Satan. They are things of the flesh. And I say, get it behind me, Satan. Oh, oh, you are not talking now. You are not. You could get your deliverance just as you speak. I said, get it behind me, Satan. And that, at least you should be able to find yourself somewhere in all those very long line. Say it with me in the name of call them by name. In the name of Jesus, get it behind me. Get it whatever it is that you can be connected to in all this because you belong to Jesus. You belong to God's kingdom. You will not answer to Satan. He is not your boss. He is not your master. Get it behind me, Satan. In the name of Jesus, I renounce anger. I renounce envy. I renounce uh, uh, hatred. I renounce you. I renounce every demon. As a shelter that affiliated with this, I renounce you. I reject you. I am a child of God. I declare that it behind me, Satan. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. John chapter 14 verse 30 says. John 14 30. Say I will not speak with you much longer. For the ruler of this world. End quote. Satan. Is the ruler of this world. Is coming. Take note of that word. Is coming. <laughs> it's a statement from Jesus himself. A statement with confirmation. Meaning he will come. If he has not already come. And he has an agenda. He has an agenda. But when he comes, he will find nothing in me. I want you to say, you know we are talking. And as you speak, so your deliverance comes. Every time Satan comes to check you, Jesus will answer him. You need to get it. You didn't get it yet. I said, every time Satan comes knocking, may the blood of Jesus answer for you. Every time 
enemy comes with his weapon, every time he projects against you, thinking he had you, may the name of the Lord become your strong power. Oh, Father, help me get people who this, this, the Hebrews, this one. He said, the prince of this world, which is Satan in court, he cometh. And, uh, and he has, TPT says, he has no claim on me. Yes. Can you say it to yourself, he has no claim on me. Yes. I am redeemed already. Yes. Ooh, Jesus, pay the full price for me. You see, all those damn flesh work that we read the other time, Jesus took them. He nailed them to the cross. That's why I am no longer envious. I am no longer angry. I am no longer bitter. I am no longer jealous. He is no longer in me. Somebody said, it is no longer in me. This body, this temple is the temple of the Holy Ghost. God lives in this body. I renounce every word of the flesh. You know, I'm talking to you, I'm just talking to you, and I wanted us to be in the spirit together. I renounce every book of the flesh, I renounce it, it's not my portion. I am holy, I am righteous, I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed. He paid a full price for me. More. Hallelujah. So he said, he has no claim on me. Please underline that. Satan, when he comes, he has no claim on my soul. He has no claim on my body. He has no claim on my health. He has no claim to my marriage. He has no claim to my career. He has no claim to my body, physical body. He has no claim. He has no claim. Satan, you have no claim on me. I have no claim. We can turn our bodies. We can speak to our blood. We can speak to our water system. We can speak to the organs in our body. Satan, you have no claim. On this one, this one, from here to here, you have no claim. You have no claim. Hallelujah. Go claim in other places. Not here. There's nothing to claim here. This one belongs to Jesus. Another one says, he has no power over me. That's what it means. You have no power over me. Say it, say it out. That's your deliverance. Say it out. Satan, you have no power over me. I've been fully redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. He paid a full price. When you go to the mall and you pay for an item, it becomes yours. You walk out with it without being afraid. I've been blood bought. Blood bought. Blood sanctified. Blood justified. Come on, can you speak with me? Please, for your own sake. Say, I am blood bought. Say it about yourself. I am sanctified. I've been justified by God. That's who you are. No anger, no malice, no envy, no hatred, and no demonic spirit has access to your soul. No, the Holy Ghost only lives inside your body. Hallelujah. Satan has no claim over your soul. He has no claim over your physical body. He has no claim. He has no claim. His claims are denied. They are cancelled. They are illegitimate. They have no ground. Hallelujah. I need to rush. He has no claim over you. He has no power over you. He has no power over me. And TPT, John chapter 16, verse 9 down to 11. Let's quickly look. We're just talking. John chapter 16, verses 9 to 11. See? Can we look at it? Okay. He said, of sin, meaning Jesus Christ, he came, he promised us that he would give us the helper. Remember that helper of last week? Amen. Our helper. Yes. The Holy Ghost. Amen. He will help us. Amen. Now, Jesus was talking about that helper. He said, he will do three things. Three things. 
He is coming to convict the world of sin. Meaning, that helper will help us to realize when we are in the wrong. It will convict us. It will make us know when we didn't do the right things. How many of us sometimes have felt so bad about some of our actions? You know, you look back. That's why I said don't look back. You look back sometimes and you feel so bad about some things in the past. Those who look back, they don't usually get to the end of the line. They die in between. Yeah. The past is bad enough. Don't bring it to the present and don't let it help you follow you to the future. Leave the past behind. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus said, when the Holy Ghost comes, he will convict the world of sin. And he will let you know of the righteousness of God that is in Christ. Then the third thing, he said, he said, he will release the sentence of Satan. Because Satan is already judged. Do you know, this enemy that you and I have, is already judged. It's not about to be judged. He's already condemned. He's a criminal that, that has no mercy. There is no mercy for him. Please pay attention. This Satan that Jesus said, he comment. He doesn't have mercy. And he's just looking for victims like himself. Who he will rock together in hell. I am not going to be his candidate. I have no, he has no portion in me. He has no claim to my soul. This soul here is been bought by Jesus Christ himself. He paid for it when he bought me. That's why we call it redemption. I was fully redeemed. So even if Satan comes to look for something to scratch, he lost you. You better hear, you better hear me. He lost you. Already. Your owner has holy jealousy. Who is that your owner? The Lord Jesus. He paid two things. He paid with his flesh. He paid with his blood. Hallelujah. So there is nothing he can bring up now that is new anymore on earth. Hmm? So don't let them begin to make you look at you and turn you to your past. He has a past. But he has a future that cannot be redeemed. But you had pasts. But your past has been forgiven. Unless you are not born again. There is nothing in your past that should be able to perfect and bite you in the current to hinder you for the future. Now, unless you allow it, everything you are in Christ now completely wiped clean, a clean slate. And even since you got, you became a believer. And you make mistakes. That was not recorded. Even against you. Are you hearing me? It has no record. God has no record of your wrongs. Are you hearing me? And I promise you. Until you go to Jesus. Finally you will still make some mistakes. I promise you that. Remember. In the list of items. We had on the board. It was not only um, witchcraft. It also came with some other things. Mention them for me. Mention them. Jealousy. So possibly before the end of this month, there will be an occasion sometimes to feel jealous about some things. But I want to say to you in confidence, do not let Satan tell you that he has a claim in you. No, 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 no claim on me. You have no power over me. He just said, this, 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 and that also has been paid for. How many people would like to say that? 
because I know some of you have two, three, four, five of some of those things listed. It's not just one. How many of you can truly tell me I have more than two that I can recognize in my life? This, 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 and that was also part of the redemption. Somebody have me shout, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I am fully redeemed. Hallelujah. Amen. So, three things happen in this scripture from verse 9 down to 11. Three things. Sin. Righteousness. And judgment. Hallelujah. Let me mention it. Sin. Righteousness. And judgment. Of all the three, I only like one. I don't know what you like. But for me, I like only one. Sin defeated. Help me say it if you believe. We are talking. I'm not preaching. It's easy for you to understand. Say, sin is defeated in my life. That's true. Believe it. Secondly, my new nature is righteousness. That's what Jesus bequeathed to you. So when you get out of the church today, you got to say to yourself, I act righteous. I behave righteous. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I think righteous thoughts. I have righteous actions. You need to say those things to yourself and begin to behave it. Because that's who you are. There is no darkness in you. None. You are the light of the world. That's what Jesus says about you. When he redeemed you, he plucked you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And he said in Matthew 5, 13 down to 15, he said, you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. You are no longer hidden, but you are a city that is set upon the hill. You cannot be hidden. The community needs you. Your father's house needs you. Your village needs you. Everyone, your children needs you. Are you hearing me? The church of God needs you. So righteousness is yours. If we're looking for a righteous man, everyone who is born again, born of Jesus, is a righteous person. You are righteous by faith. Because he took you already from the mess, from sin. And he brought you to himself. He took off his own clothes, which is the cloth of righteousness, and he wore it on you. So right now you are pure before the Father. Accepted without any limitation. Sin was inherited. And the consequence of sin fell on every man. Adam was the originator of sin. Sin was recorded in him. And because he's the first father of the living, he brought the consequence of sin on all men. So by virtue of you being a human, you have that tendency to sin. And the reward of sin is death. Hallelujah. Amen. So we can say Adam brought death. That's simple. Adam because he sinned. And so all humanity, at one time, at one point in your life, you will die. Nobody likes to hear that. At one point or another, you will die. Even the spiritual and the physical. The spiritual death, that's what you have been. Since you ever, before you ever met Christ, you have been a dead man, a dead woman. But now that you came to Christ, you were just born. That's why we call you born again. Just born to God now. So you are a special species of an individual that never existed before. You never existed before. You are a new person. That's why the scripture says we are new creatures. 
The old is past and the new is come. Hallelujah. And the third thing is the reality. And the final end of Satan, the one who deceived Adam. God judged them even from that beginning. His judgment stays final. He cannot appeal. He cannot repent. You could, you can go ahead now and just tell God, I repent of life. We did that today. And God forgives. And there is no record. Now, let, let me quickly put this before I forget. Anybody that brings you back, that brings back your past, they are agents of Satan. You said so. Not me. But I, I think I agree with you. Anybody that ties you to your worst past is an agent of Satan. That's why I'm saying, get behind the Satan. Satan. If your past could help you, you shouldn't be where you are now. Otherwise, Jesus would have asked you to keep on looking. He said, looking on to Jesus. The author and the finisher of your faith. We are talking. But are we understanding so far? Hallelujah. Somebody else will say, I'm leaving my past behind. Then Satan has been sentenced. Not only judged, but sentenced. His place is determined. Hell forever. Sentenced. Sentenced. Just waiting for the time. Sentenced. How can a condemned criminal be the one suggesting to you who you are? Hallelujah. I've been redeemed. So we have sin, righteousness, and judgment. You can't have judgment. God is not coming to judge you anymore. You have passed from death to life. There is no judgment hanging over you. Anybody invoking any judgment, I just laugh. If anybody will come around and say they want to invoke anything of my own children, already they are in trouble. Because by the grace that is upon me, I don't care where you stand. And I don't care what they have done. By my position, I have capacity to overrule at any time. So, 20 years of curses, I will just sit down and declare. Because I know what is written. Hallelujah. And positionally, I have authority that God bequeathed to me. Hallelujah. And that's what we call fatherhood. Ability to lift a burden under God's authority. And God will say, yeah, my son has spoken. Because in the word of the spirit there are ranks, there are levels. We are not all the same. Hallelujah. So there are three persons that we are looking at. Adam. I'm done with Adam. God took me away from Adam. And with all that he brought into my life, God cancels it. The Adam and me died. He died. Adam is a representation of the old man, old nature. The personality of a sinner. He died. Please help me say he died. He died. He died. You are not a sinner anymore. Sin dies in you. Now you will have desire to do the right thing because of the one who lives in you from now. Who is it that lives in you now? The Lord Jesus Christ. And because he lives in you, he comes with his righteousness. And he comes with acceptance. Which So right now, you are not ignored. You are not far from God. Right now, you don't have to cry, where is God? No, God actually resides in you. God loves you as much as he loves Jesus. You are not different from Jesus. You are not apart from Jesus. You are in him. He is in you. You are complete in him. And he is the head of all principalities and powers. 
You are complete. Amen. Say with me, I am complete in Christ. I am complete. So we have the man Adam who introduces sin and we have the man Jesus who introduces righteousness. And then we have the adversary Satan who did not only bring confusion but he has been condemned and judged. Hallelujah. And your place is righteousness. Your place is with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible calls Satan the prince of this world. When he controls, he manipulates, he is in charge of this planet. But when he comes, as though he is the landlord, he will find nothing in you. Nothing of his will reside in you anymore. Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Quickly, before we pray. Romans 5 12. So when Adam sinned, the entire world was affected. Sin entered human experience and death was the result. And so death followed sin and began to cast shadows upon humanity. So, in case death is casting shadows on you, anybody within the house, that death is hovering around, I'm speaking now deeply, yeah. anybody that currently, you see sometimes, if God opens your eyes, you could just see cloud over people. And those clouds may not represent anything good. They may be bad things about to happen. Now, in case there is anybody in the house that is carrying any bad omen who is currently under the shadow of death, who is under the shadow of fear, calamity, disaster of any kind, by my stand here under the authority of Jesus, I cancel that sentence in the name of Jesus. And I say to you, you shall not die. You shall live to the ten works of God. By the authority of the word of God, I cancel premature death for somebody here. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every shadow of death that is surrounding somebody as a straw in the house today, I declare tears in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. First Corinthians chapter one verse thirty. First Corinthians chapter one verse thirty. First Corinthians chapter. I'm just talking to you, and we're going to pray just quickly. First Corinthians chapter one verse thirty. For it is not from man that we draw our lives. I'm reading TPT translation. It is not from man. Man is limited. How can you draw life from fellow man? He doesn't have. So he can't give. But we can draw life from the source of life itself. From the Lord Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. So as you're hearing God's word today, you are drawing life from the word. Because the word is life. You're drawing life. So that you may have life in abundance. The life to the full to an overflow. That's what you draw him for. Hallelujah. But looking unto a man to draw life, you are given responsibility that is beyond a man. We can't draw life from a man. It's not possible. But we draw life from God himself. As we are being joined to Jesus, the anointed one. He said, now he is our God. God is our God and is the given, our God's given wisdom. He's trying to tell us that Jesus to us is God's gift of wisdom. Jesus to us is God's gift of virtue and a good goodness. Jesus to us is God's gift of holiness. I can boldly say I am holy. 
why don't you say it? Are you still afraid? What's the meaning of holiness? Set aside. You have been set aside for God. How many people are set aside for God? Yeah, you belong to Jesus. You belong to Jesus. You belong to Jesus. You are set aside. Say, say it and believe it, please. Say, I belong to Jesus. That, that, that simply suggests that you don't belong to you. You no longer belong to you. I belong to Jesus. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you set aside. When Satan comes looking for you, Jesus will shout, Get thee behind my son, get thee behind my daughter. This one is what? Set aside. That's what I want you to get. So you being holy is not particularly for yourself. It's because of your owner. I know my owner. The one who owns me, who bought me, who paid for me. I know who he is. He is my boss. He's my master. He's my king. Only him will I worship. Hallelujah. So my worship is to Jesus, not to any other person. My service is to Jesus, the one who paid the full price over my life. Because I've been set aside. You are set aside. Reach out to your neighbor and say, you are the holy man. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. Don't let any devil tell you you are, you are not holy. Don't, don't listen to any demon to tell you that you are dirty, you are filthy. You are the holy God. God's prayed possession. You are a holy lady, a holy brother, a peculiar treasure. God has set you aside for himself. So let demons beware. You can't use me. You can't play with me. Witches beware. You can't use me. You can't play with me. If any demon tries to play around you, it means you are testing God. Why? Because he set you aside. So when you go take something that is set aside, you are a rebellious person. You are violating divine order and you will be punished. So I rebuke every foul spirit playing with God's property. You didn't hear me? Every foul spirit playing with your life, I rebuke them in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray the prayer just now. The word says, He made us holy to God, and He is, we are, he, he, he is our redeeming, a redeemer. We, he redeems us. Jesus Christ is our redemption. Hallelujah. And lastly, the word says, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Said the reason why Jesus came, okay, before that, he said, He who indulges in sin, to indulge is not to say, I did it one time. To indulge is to have a regular practice. Doing wrong things all the time. Unrepentant. He's habited. I mean, what do you call them? Habitual. He does it at will. He can't live without it. Yes, you can live without sin. That's why you are in church. Otherwise, you would have been in Paul by now. By right, holy man, a holy woman. So he said, he who indulges in sin is of the devil because Satan sinned from the beginning. He said, for this reason, the Son of God manifested that he may destroy the works of Satan. May I prophesy that every work of Satan in your life is hereby destroyed. So Jesus had a reason for coming. His reason was to destroy. And he's busy destroying the works of Satan in your life. He is destroyed it in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you rise in two minutes? Let's pray this prayer in two minutes. And good for you, it's not even going to be something you pray about. I will just lead you to confess it. And that we will be done. You just confess it after me. And then we are done. 
But I want you to believe today you have been set aside. You are a peculiar treasure to God. And I want you to mean it when you are declaring this thing. Say it and believe it. Say it with me. Dear Lord Jesus. I decree and declare by the authority of the word of God that every item, every property, every belongings of mine residing with my enemy, I retreat them now in the name of Jesus. The enemy has anything that is yours. Know that you are not safe. Because they would surely use it against you. They would surely use it against you. You can't trust an enemy. You can never trust an enemy. They will use it against you. So, what could be like my items, properties. Uh, it could be like you have some kind of a concept that God gives to you. Concept, ideas. You got it and you knew it was God that gave it to you. And you wrote it down. But you went and just said, this is my friend. This is my, and then you shared it with them. But they were supposed to be friends, but they were actually enemies in disguise. They will use it against you. They will take it and use it when you are not aware. And they will claim it to be theirs. Hallelujah. Every property of yours in the hand of your enemy. Oh God, I retrieve it by fire. I retrieve it. It could be things that you kept a secret with somebody. It could be anger. Because anger does not belong to God, but it could be the property of Satan inside you. Inside you, locked up inside you. I renounce you, I reject you. It could be jealousy. They are properties, but they are not of God. It could be hatred. It could be anger. It could be witchcraft. It could be adultery. It could be, it could be um, um, secrets, personal matters. That you shared with somebody and thought they had your back. It's a lie. When the chips are down. Hallelujah. Amen. So declare this after me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every story of my life. Every story of my life. Yeah, that one right there. The story of your life that you told somebody and they kept on using it against you. Demeaning you, demoralizing you, frustrating you. Every time you like to write, they bring the issue. And spoil you before people who should have helped you. Destroy your relationships all over the place. So that when somebody who really, really had great plans for you hear about your story, they just turn around. Hallelujah. And there is nobody here without a story about their life that they are not proud of. Not one. Including the brothers looking so cool there. Everyone in the house. You have something about your life that you are not proud to share. And unfortunately, you are not the only one that knows about it. Somebody else knows. And they are now using it against you. Let's, let's pray this prayer. All the information that you kept secret that somebody is now using against you. The weaknesses in you. The errors you made. The mistakes you made in life that was only accessible to one person or two. And they are using that to demoralize you. Today, in the name of Jesus, those things are property of Satan. Get me behind the Satan in the name of Jesus. So we are going to declare by the authority and the power in the word of God, I receive my liberty now. All you accusers of brethren, the Lord beats you now. I 
I'll assist you out of my life, out of my, life. Out of my family. In the name of Jesus, of Jesus. I, hear I hear the clear. The judgment of God upon every agent of Satan appointed against my life and family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that I am free from idolatry from fornication and adultery, from witchcraft and anger, from jealousy and hatred, in the name of Jesus Christ, God be behind in Satan, in the name of Jesus, to not have God behind in Satan, in the name of Jesus, and lastly, let me be Satan. Let me be Satan. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen.